Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how to paint fire with a really easy wet blend technique using contrast paints. Our volunteers for this video will be a pair of brimstone horrors, and I've already primed these with the new White Scar Citadel spray. To get this technique, we'll just be using four contrast paints. One of them is the new Bad Moon Yellow, and then the other three are existing paints from the line. I'll just be painting one of the models in this video, but I did this technique on all ten of my brimstone horrors. So let's get started and I'll show you exactly how this technique works and in the video I'm going to just go through it in real time so you can see exactly how it's done and how quick it is. Before we do that though I'd like to say a huge thank you to this month's sponsors who are making these daily videos possible and I'll put their links in the comments section below and if you can check those out that's a great way to support the channel and help me to keep these videos coming. Here we go, so we're going to start off with the contrast bad moon yellow and then while that's still wet on the model we're going to blend in some contrast griff hound orange. As we work our way up to the tips of the flames we're going to then use contrast flesh tear as red and then we can use black templar at the very end as an optional fourth step. I've opened up all my paint pots at the same time and I've got this quite large base brush and I'm just going to work that into the bristles here and I'm just going to give an even coat of the bad moon yellow all over the model. I'm starting at the bottom because this is going to be the part that will be completely yellow by the end of this painting video and I don't mind if this dries a little bit but I do want the top half where we're going to be wet blending the other colours to remain wet so I'm just painting all over the model first starting from the bottom and working my way up. So I'm putting a decent amount of paint on here with these flames there's quite a large surface area with all the folds and contours so I'm just working in making sure it's a nice even coat all over and then when I'm happy that I've done the base and I've covered enough of that then I start filling in all the top parts of the flames as well moving that model around so I can get my brush in there nice and easy really good to just move the model rather yourself and then you can keep yourself in a nice pose you've got your arms resting on the table so you're nice and relaxed and you're not going to be shaking too much um, although we're not painting anything in any detail here it's still good to use those practices I think so I keep going, moving that paint around, making sure there's not too much in any of the areas. And then when I'm happy, I give my brush a swill out, get rid of most of that paint and water on some kitchen towel, and I'm straight into the Griffhound orange. And now I'm going to start at the very tips of the flame. And as I put that paint on, it's going to seep into some of that yellow. And it wants to work its way down a little bit, especially into the recesses. So I'm letting the paints and the model do all the work for me here. I'm just dotting some of this Griffhound orange on and then letting the paints mix themselves on the model. So I'm really being careful how much I'm putting on and just really starting at the top and then just helping it down if I feel it needs to go a little bit lower, picking out the tips of all the different flames on the different parts. If I think there's too much paint, I'll just wipe off a little bit on the kitchen towel and then I'll just dab and dot around to work that blend down towards the eyes, get it into those different features and then just move it. But I do want it to be more orange at the tip of the flame than it is as it goes lower. So I'm just mixing those paints together and blending them in. So then I wash off my brush. I'm going back into the yellow now and this is a good step just to mix in between the yellow and orange just to soften it a little bit and make that fade a little bit smoother. So all done on the model, nice and easy. So, you know, you can just see how quick and, and simple this is to do. Just really letting the model and the paints do all the work and just getting that balance between how much to put on and then when to add more yellow paint to make that fade a little bit smoother. Now while it's all still wet, I'll wash my brush, again dry it on the kitchen towel, and now I'm straight into the flesh tear as red, and I'm putting a tiny bit at the tip of each flame. Not as much as I did with the orange, I don't want it to be quite as strong, so I just want this to be a little bit of red at the top. And I've gone for flesh tear as red, it's a little bit darker than the other uh, Blood Angels red contrast paints, and I haven't tried the newer ones yet, but of the two that I do have, I find this one's really nice and rich, and this will work great for flames, because the fourth step which is optional is to put a little dot of black at the tip and so having this darker red against that black works really nicely. 
So I'm dotting it on and then I'm just doing exactly like I did with the orange, just smoothing it down and just working it into that paint. It's all still wet, so it's blended in nicely and the fade's going to be nice and smooth. And just as before, where I grabbed the yellow, now I'm going to grab some orange and just work that in between the lines where the red and orange cross over. So if it's too strong and I want it to be a bit smoother, I'll just add a little bit there and then use the tip of my brush to help it along. And that's really all there is to it. It's a nice, simple technique, very easy. I'm going back here with a bit more yellow just to help those fades be a bit smoother where it's run down a bit more. But, you know, you could play around with it a lot. But I think the, the main thing is once you've got something that you're happy with, leave it alone. Because when it dries, it's going to change. It is going to smooth out a little bit more. And so there's going to be a big difference from what you see here and to what the model looks like when it's dried. You might notice that the base is already painted. Now, I just went over this with a grey paint, the Mechanica Standard Grey. Once that dried, I dry brushed it with White Scar, and this is going to fit in with my Chaos Space Marines for a scorched, burnt earth effect. Now we're taking some Black Templar. This is an optional extra fourth step, but I think it's worth doing because it does finish it off nicely. And on the tips of flames, they often turn to smoke, and they're quite dark, so you can use a little bit of black here just to tip the flames. Now, most of this red is dry. The yellow is still a little bit wet in the recesses, but the tips are dry, and that's important to let that happen because we don't want this to wet blend with the other paints. We just want to put a tiny bit on the very tips of the flames. So I'm just working my way around, trying to move the model more than myself. So I've got lots of control because at this stage, I don't want to make any mistakes and have to go right back to white and then do it again. So yeah, just took my time there. And there you go, that's the Brimstone Horrors painted with a wet blend flame effect using contrast paint. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. Nice, easy technique, quick to do, and I think the results are well worth the short amount of time that's been put into it. I love these new contrasts that I've tried so far. The Bad Moon Yellow is brilliant, but I've always been a big fan of contrast paints. And using these three together with that Black Templar at the end, I think is a really nice way to paint fire. Here's all 10 of the models, and I'll be using these in my Chaos Space Marine Army, so I'm really looking forward to getting these on the tabletop. And they came in a box of blue horrors, so if you're looking to get hold of some of these for yourselves, I'll put some links down below to Firestorm Games, and there you can pick these horrors up and loads of other hobby items and save yourself up to 20% too. If you order from them before the 31st of August, you'll also save an additional 5% on the usual up to 20%. So some big savings to be made there. And you'll also support the channel as I get a small commission from every sale made through that link. I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope it gave you a good idea of just how easy it can be to get a nice fire effect using these contrast paints. When I first painted fire, I was a little bit nervous going into it, but I soon realised once you wet blend it on the model like this, it's actually pretty easy. So I hope you give it a go. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comment sections below. So let me know what you think. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below.